Okay. Well, you are on a thin eyes, Mr. Sorry. Wi Fi. Try to catch this. Oh no. Her Wi Fi. <gasps> I'm so sorry. I didn't. Well, good luck with cleaning that. I have to dress up for the dinner. Dear Debbie, sometimes I forget that we're apart. Sometimes I forget that your planet is light years away. All things considered, these many weeks with you have been some of the best weeks of my life, even if they weren't with you. Many times I've seen you on my iPad and felt as close to you as if you were sitting right across from me. Maybe it's because our relationship was built on more than just touch. Most mornings, I'm overjoyed just to see your face on my screen and hear your voice reading poetry and laughing at your little brother. But there's a moment at the end of every day where my phone is plugged in, you've already been asleep for hours, and all I want to do is put my arms around you and hold you tight. It's an intangible desire with nothing to grasp but empty air. That's the moment I have to remember this is not the end of the story. Dear Houston, there are days I don't want to get out of my bed because it feels like part of my soul went for a trip. Life on my planet is getting better, but there are weeks where all the days become a strange and a painful blur. And these days, I don't want to call you or even talk to you. Sometimes, through our connection, my awareness of separation grows and spreads. Looking at your face during FaceTime, when my Wi-Fi is poor and I see how badly the screen reflects colors and shapes of your eyes, somehow it's unbearable. But I call you anyway. Last time we rode each other, the seasons were turning to spring. Now it's nearly summer, and I haven't felt your hand in mine in 73, 73 days, days and counting. There are days for me too, where the uncertainty of when we'll see each other, when our planets will be open again, when I'll look you in the eyes and see more than just pixels, it drives me crazy. It doesn't really help that my sister and her boyfriend are throwing water balloons in the yard, hugging each other like there's no tomorrow. You told me a month ago that we would blossom through this curse, and I think we are. I'd be lying if I said that life doesn't go on without you. Despite everything happening, things have actually been good here. but. Blossoming without each other makes life feel fragmented. I want to take every small delight, every minor annoyance, every moment of quiet contemplation, and live it all with you. I spoke with my grandparents recently and shared the pain of missing you. They were telling me about how they wrote letters to each other while being separated during dating for a long time. 
All they had were words on a paper. A thin string, but it was strong. It has lasted now for decades. Even though we have technology that it never did, it seems like words are still the core. It seems like touching each other with words, the only touch we have, can test us and build something solid. That in the absence of the other, our knowing of each other is growing. Our art of listening is growing. Our desire and relationship just seem more solid. I really don't want to waste my I love you's and my you look beautiful's, but it's so hard not to say them over and over when they're the closest thing I can manage to giving you a hug. These experiences we've had together, even over FaceTime, have been so momentously meaningful and so profoundly present that I sometimes feel overwhelmed with desire to affirm them somehow, to show you how much they mean, how much my life feels better with you in it. All I have, even now, are my words. It doesn't feel like enough but at least it's tangible. There's a moment every afternoon where we blow kisses, I say goodnight to you, and then one of us hits the red button and disappears, instantaneously absent. And that's the moment where the silence feels like poison. That's the split second where the 4,987 miles of land and ocean and maybe stars and planets between us suddenly stretches for eternity. Sometimes I don't want to call you, but I do it anyway. When we gather, it's not perfect, but it's still real. But the pain reminds me how much we long to be connected and live in a relationship, and how much I long for our reunion. I remind myself that this is not the end of our story. This is not the end of our story. With love, Debbie Houston.